Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. We have a show called Conversations with Fred. Every week we bring people in from the community to hopefully provide you information. It's going to make your life easier, give you more information about how the county runs, et cetera, et cetera. I'm very lucky uh, to have two of our hot... Oh, by the way, Amy, i got to start off with this. Stephanie, excuse me for doing this. Phil Dumanel said you're a renaissance woman, okay, and the best hire he's ever made. So that was in a conversation yesterday with Phil. You don't even have to comment, but if you want to, you can. So it's a nice uh, surprise. That is. And Thanks both of you, sure. I want you to know, all the commissions we've had on, it keeps tugging in my shirt. Fred, would you get these two women on who know what the <laughs> heck they're talking about, okay? How about, Amy, start with you. How about introduce yourself, positions you have at the, or position you have in the county, and what the heck's, you know, that good start. Yep. So my name is Amy Mordock, and I am the planning director here in Queen Anne's County. Um, we have a really great staff of uh, planners and zoning staff, and I've been here for three years now. Great. Um, in some ways, it feels like it's been five minutes, and in some ways, it feels like it's been a lot <laughs> Friday <longer. laughs> feels like it's been a lifetime, doesn't it? And, yeah. and you're too modest to say, but I know you're a Star Trek fan. I am very much a Star Trek fan. Oh, very good. I can't do my hand. I can't do that. I'm at, I like that. Okay. And I hear you're now an actress on the side. Or act, go ahead. When I have free time, I do. I love to do community theater. Okay. And um, I'm looking forward to having some free time again once we finish with you the comp do plan it. to do it. Good, again. okay. And what's your favorite play, by the way? I think the favorite play that I've done has been Little Foxes at Churchill okay. a long time ago. Terrific. All right, very good. Stephanie, we apologize. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie, you get everybody's sympathy and praise in the beginning before you say, open your mouth. You're raising three children and doing a good job, and you survived <laughs> you. the last year, right? So congratulations. <laughs> Uh, my name is Stephanie Jones. I'm the Long Range Principal Planner with Queen Anne's County. I've been here for about nine months, and since I've started, I have been working on the comprehensive plan for most of the time. That's almost a full-time job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Now, ladies, help us out. Uh, I've had county commissioners and some other people, and all they want to talk about is a comp plan. I'm convinced in my heart that most people aren't really sure what the comp plan is, what it is, how they can get involved, Okay, and where are we are in the timeline in developing the new comp plan. So, do you want to start off and help me with those questions? What is it? What is a comp plan? Sure. Do you want me to give them the boring part? And <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> Let her be a star. Yeah. She's got three kids. Come on. So, the, um, technically, the comprehensive plan is a legislative requirement. You have so, to, the county has to do it. That's okay. correct. So, the state has what is called the land use article in the annotated code. And the land use article mandates that every jurisdiction in the state uh, adopt a comprehensive plan that guides not only growth, but is the philosophical guidance document that is meant to direct and be consistent with all of the county's documents. Okay. Um, not just within the planning department, but within all county departments. The planning commission is given the task of being the body that is responsible for maintaining that comprehensive plan, drafting it, updating, and reporting out on it. But it is officially the county commissioner's document. They're responsible. So they sign off on it. They do. They do. Okay. Amy, is this, I mean, is this every 10 years we have? And I was on the board of it. We were talking before we went on the air, mm -hmm. Stephanie, that we had to have a plan, a roadmap. So is this something we have to do every 10 years? Or? That's correct. Okay. Have so to do it. We have by to do law. it. And then every five years we have to update, update it okay. just to make it's not and it's not an official update like the update we're going through right now, but every five years we have to look at it and check off the strategies that we're meeting okay. and sort of assess the strategies that we're not yet meeting okay. and why we're not. Are we following the plan? Exactly. If not, what is the plan to follow the plan? Does that that's, make sense? That's it. It's every yeah. ten years. Okay. So Steffi, what me good, did you want to add to that or what? Um, she covered the boring part. Okay. Yeah, we, I can go we, into the details as to what, what you know, what's yeah, in that I mean, document. People, before I came in the show, it's a true story. Someone talked to my sleeve and me. Fred, is it just land use? Is it everything? So help me with that. Yeah, so basically when you open that document up, you're going to see everything from transportation, um, the economy. Uh, also, you'll see um, community facilities, so if, if anything from a county park. Um, basically to a water um, treatment plant okay. will be in there. Also, you'll see um, the land use, 
which that's probably like the biggest okay. the biggest one. That's, and that's the one people seem to gravitate towards in time, whether yes. we like it or not. They do. Yes, yes. that's that's the biggest. I've lived here forty five years. Every single election, okay, that I've had, we've I've seen as a county commissioner, one issue comes up: growth, land mm -hmm. use. Every election, and this is going back to the seventies, where mm -hmm. dinosaurs ruled the planet. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, but it, but it does, it's important for the public to understand, I mean, understand, it does incorporate more than just land use. Yes. Sanitation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, so if we're talking about building a new building out here for the county, that would be in a plan. It could possibly be, yeah, if it's something the county is going to, you know, try to do in the next 10 years. Okay. Um, it might be in there. Also, it covers the environment. There's an environment chapter, so that's anything from preservation to, um, you know, also now the update that we're doing now is going to include... Uh, Stormwater, or not stormwater, sorry, it'll include um, sea level rise okay. and kind of addressing that. So we're that. talking mm -hmm. about global warming. Mm -hmm. oh, we so we are in a, mm -hmm. in a county yep. document. Okay, mm -hmm. well, good. That's and every every so, other city in the world's flooding. I, if I'm on Ken Island, I'm going, hey, Stephanie, <laughs> give me some type of thing to keep this thing off yeah. my back, right? Yeah. Yep, so it, it will address that. Okay. Um, uh, basically, this one is an update. Okay. So obviously, the last comp plan was done 10 years ago. I think that one was an overall like a revamp. Mm -hmm. There was a, a lot of big, you know, changes overall. This document is more of an update. So they're updating things that may have occurred in the last 10 years and also obviously where the county wants to go in the next 10 years. Okay. But it's not a huge, um, you know, start from scratch kind of document. They're taking each chapter as it exists and kind of working from and there. Working through it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say, uh, that's the next question. What, has, I mean, a little bit go back. What has been the timeline, say, for, you've been here how many months, you said, and, and yep. that's all I've been able to do for you. Okay. <laughs> so what is the timeline for this? Is, I mean, do we pick a magic date and say, okay, we're going to have meetings, and then what, does the commissioners listen to at the meetings? or How does that all work? Mm -hmm. So there's a schedule, usually, that's basically drafted at the start of that process. Okay. Um, we're working with Wallace Montgomery as the consultant that's working okay. with the county, um, so they're responsible for drafting those schedules. Um, they basically have put together all the meetings that we've had, the visioning sessions, the um, special topic sessions, um, and all those meetings were all virtual. You know, we were okay. all still in that COVID. We were COVID. in the COVID. Yeah. Yes. Um, we were, so we, we... Did that hurt, do you think, or help? Or um, I think it helped, actually. Computers. Um, I got yeah. a computer at home. I don't have to get in the car. Right, yeah. You don't minutes. have to get in the car. You don't have to go somewhere. Okay. Um, it was a lot easier, I think, for some people to respond. Um, obviously, some people in public meetings aren't going to speak up, up or say something. Embarrassed. They might okay. see their neighbor, know it's going to hurt their neighbor's feelings or whatnot. But um, on the computer, there's a, there was a chat box, so it allowed people basically... Actually talk. Well, uh, there was oh. a chat they could type. Oh, type They on. could type, type a comment, okay. and then you're not, you know, face-to-face -face with someone. You okay. could still, you know, turn your camera on and talk to them or, or talk to the consultant. It's tough for people to stand up and mean and say, I don't mm -hmm. want this or I yeah. want that. I mean, it's difficult, right. right? So I think it helped us along the way through all okay. those meetings, and we were able to have one um, meeting. It was actually our land use discussion. Okay. Um, which, where, which is a hot topic, yes, right? Yes. It was our last uh, special topic session. It, we did do it virtually and kind of hybrid um, at the Sudlersville Fire so you could go, Hall. So you could show yeah, you up could, or do it on computer? You could show up, and they were able to watch uh, Lauren, which is uh, the head um, project manager, through okay. Wallace Montgomery on the screen, but they're also able to give comments so that people that are watching virtually could also see the in-person portion and, and vice versa. Okay, okay. So, so, so mm -hmm. let me ask both of you, so it's uh, the 16th of July, so where are we at the 16th of July of 20 in this timeline of getting this comp plan? We are, out of all of the, everything has been drafted. Okay, all so of, all it, the chapters have been drafted. Okay. Um, they can be viewed. On the website, the county's um, comprehensive plan. Can you give website. me what, what, what would, if I'm at home and saying, wait a minute, I you couldn't make the meetings. Oh, if you don't know, we'll put it we'll, on. Don't we'll worry. Don't yeah. worry about it. Don't plan QAC 2021. I have 36 yeah. emails, 74 <laughs> passwords. I have to give my cell phone to my grandchildren. How the yeah. heck do I use it? So I, don't I've worry copied about and pasted it more than a hundred times. I'm sure. But so, uh, what you just said, make sure I understood. It. You're writing now, mm -hmm. is that right? Well, are it's they, all been, finished? It's been drafted, all but finished. edits and comments are okay. coming in, um, obviously from the public, from other county entities, county agencies, in order for the app, or for the consultant to make edits to okay. those drafted No, So you've got this document. It goes mm -hmm. to the consultants. Mm -hmm. Now, and there's a 50, 100 page. What is given to the, I mean, the commissioners have to vote, correct? Mm -hmm. So what, 
what, ha- what do they get? I mean, if I'm Stevie Wilson, am I going right. to need two truckloads to get this to my house to uh, read? I, I, I don't think two truckloads. Okay. Um, big, <laughs> He's got a Corvette. A wheelbarrow, maybe. A wheelbarrow, okay. <laughs> One of the goals of this um, comp plan was to narrow down the existing comp plan. Make okay. it a make little it smaller. smaller. Okay. Yep. Well, so, give me, let me, I apologize. Are we talking 50 pages, volumes, or what are we talking? Uh, each each one of those, uh, basically, chapters I mentioned do actually have a chapter. There's usually maps associated okay. with it. Okay, so it's just a specific spot where something's being built mm-hmm. or something's being considered or yada yada, okay. I would say, um, how many pages? I mean, give me a guess. Each chapter no is about 20, 25 right. pages. This is roughly. a big document. It's a big mm-hmm. document. And, make, and let me make sure, you can go online now mm-hmm. and review it. Yes? yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And if you review it and you don't like something, we pass the time or... People can comment on no, it? No, you can still make what, comments. What, can they, what do they do? Go. Um, there is a, a link on the website where someone can make a comment. There's a feedback comment um, tab they could click on. Okay, so you can um, actually read, the, read what you've got done so mm-hmm. far and say, hey, da, 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 I don't like this or I'd like to suggest yep. that. Yep. And that will be considered in yep. the process? They can also okay. attend uh, the planning commission meetings and provide public comment. Okay. Um, also, once this document basically is... Um, ready to be approved by the Planning Commission. It will go out for a 60-day review. Okay. Um, and at that point in time, the, there'll be public hearings and they can provide comments then. Um, so there's multiple, still multiple meetings that okay. someone could can the provide commissioners, I'm sorry, can the commissioners change something? Say like, the, say the, the document comes on the desk, no more growth after the 301.50 divide, but the commissioners mm-hmm. say, heck with that, can they actually overgrow it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, they can make changes and to the And they're document. publicly elected, so it's democracy, right? Mm-hmm. You've, you get your public official who can make the comment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let me just ask, out of interest, and you don't have to comment, uh, how, would the, how were the Zoom meetings and the meetings? Were they well attended? Were they... I'd say... All about growth, or how... Uh, no, well, no. I'd say... Our largest meeting was the land use okay. meeting um, by far. Um, the small, some of the other meetings, um, probably, I don't know, 20, 25 people, I'd say, with the okay. smallest amount. Well, for a public but, meeting, that's if you get a crowd of yeah, 25, yeah. nothing and wrong with that. It's like terrific. you say, people always ask, what is the comprehensive yes, plan? Well, yes. you, you got to get that interest out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, it's a roadmap for 10 years. You yeah. care where the roads are going, where the, the thing. Stevie, are you allowed at this point to comment on the document as it's being prepared? I mean, can you comment on these different chapters now for this show or not? As in? If I said to you, what is the comp plan going to say about growth? Mm-hmm. Can you comment on that? Oh, yeah, there's oh, areas okay. where it does address growth. Okay, any um, specific? The land, the land use, obviously, is the biggest portion okay. where it does address growth. Also, oh. there's a water resource analysis, okay. um, which is a portion where we're um, basically dealing with sewer capacity. And I don't know, Amy, if you want to well, chime we in on that a little. Well, yeah. Stevie Wilson, one mind, he was on here last week, mm-hmm. and he said, Fred, the state has told us, no, you're not going to have any more sewers. Now, the sanitation, besides you know what's been already planned for, you've reached your limit. We've hit the ceiling. And yeah. I believe he said, I know it. I don't believe it. I know it. I'm not misquoting him. He said, Fred, there's probably the growth issue might be mute now because we just can't. The state's not going to let us do it. I mean, is that what we're seeing the county proposing? And are you allowed to comment on that? Or? Yeah, And I don't want to speak for Alan no. Quimby, who's no. our public works director. Okay. But we're in close, uh, obviously, close communication with the Department of Public Works as well as all of the other uh, technical committee members right. who are county agencies and state agencies. Um, but the truth is, and the reality is, that that nutrient cap yeah. that is assigned to the county's yeah, wastewater right. treatment plan, and every um, wastewater treatment plan in the state has a nutrient cap. Mm-hmm. So we all received about 10 years ago uh, through the water resources element requirement and the watershed implementation plans that were put into place several years ago, a decade ago. Um, all of the jurisdictions were given a charter to say, okay, this is your limit. Figure out how you can reduce your pollutant loads right. and how you can manage, better manage your growth. And a lot of Um, funding was available through the Bay Restoration Fund for plant upgrades 
and upgrades to uh, individual septic systems mm -hmm. to a nitrogen removing right, septic system. Right. So that funding and those upgrades have kind of worked their worked themselves out, worked themselves through um, the development review process and through the construction process. And most wastewater treatment plants now have been upgraded to what's called ENR, enhanced nutrient removal. And we are where we are with the technology at best managing our nutrient loads. Right, right. So we are hitting that cap because every jurisdiction has um, basically a license that goes so far. Yeah. Uh, one of the commissioners said, Fred, I want to make it very clear, and people have to know this, we've reached the ceiling on a lot of issues and sanitation, growth in general, what we're doing Our in roads. the Bay, mm -hmm. the highways, and you know, no matter what the issue is, we've that ceiling is there and we're hitting our heads on it. We're there. So yeah. Uh, the allocations have basically been promised. So what this comprehensive plan, there are two really, or well, three key issues. And one is, of course, looking at sea level rise right. and looking at the impacts of climate change, the uh, sunny day flooding that we're all experiencing mm -hmm. and dealing with that issue as it relates to our areas of growth, because some of our areas of most intense development are also our areas that are the most vulnerable. Most threatened, right, yes. Um, so namely Kent Island and Kent Narrows, right. uh, the inundation models aren't, aren't pretty for, no, for those no. areas uh, in the uh, 2050 projection timeline. Um, so that's a very serious consideration in I mean, the with county. all the coast, I mean, probably, mm -hmm. I mean, how many miles of coastline do we have? I'm sure you, you probably, you know, it doesn't matter, don't worry about mm -hmm. number, but I mean, it's very threatening. I don't know how mm -hmm. you feel. I mean, I, I help Sheriff Hoffman uh, patrol that Ken Island Trail, mm -hmm. and as I go down Ken Island, uh, there's nothing but coastline there. That's right. And if mm -hmm. uh, there are people that don't believe in global warming, they have that right, but those of us that do, and I'm guilty I do, I think we've got a real critical problem with Ken Island, and it sounds like the county's beginning to address it, which is terrific. And, At least putting out there. The county's been really proactive uh, mm -hmm. in looking at areas of coastal vulnerability and other climate impacts. So mm -hmm. the county already has adopted a vulnerability study. What? Are, that can we're I? Using. I mean, apologies, because these are things new to remember. I'm playing the dummy here, so I don't. What the, what are our plans in place now? I mean, one, it sounds like we're accepting the fact that perhaps there's coastal insecurity, whatever the words you're using. What are some plans we have now? Can I ask you that? Is that a fair question for you guys or not? Sure. Oh, sure. Um, and really, the county has done one major study just showing us our areas of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And then the county has begun to undertake the study of prioritizing um, what practices we could put into place, what strategies we can put into place that are the most pressing, wow. okay. where we're the most vulnerable, and where the most um, human life and safety impacts will occur, and impacts to property. Mm -hmm. um, and also, the second phase of looking at how we can strategize and how we can prioritize those strategies is how we're going to pay for Okay, It's going to be billions and billions. I mean, I know nothing about your field, but I do know if I look at the map of the East Coast of the United States where the ma ma overwhelming majority or a large percentage of our population is, mm -hmm. there's a threat here, whether mm -hmm. you're in Boston or you're in Key West, Florida, and it's good to know that we're doing something. Mm -hmm. This is the most terrific. beautiful places to oh, live. Yes. So people are drawn <laughs> Everybody to wants waterfront, right? <laughs> right. Um, so the county is really looking at strategies like um, setbacks mm -hmm. from mean high tide that might exceed the setbacks that we have. And none of this is codified. These no. are all just ideas. These are just ideas, <laughs> and citizens can get input That's if they don't right. agree with us, right? That's okay. correct. Um, and we're looking at some of our vulnerable roads and okay. bridges. Okay. What can we do in terms of making sure that communities aren't cut off in a flood event? Emergency. So, be in the Outer Banks in North Carolina, there are times of the year you just can't drive on the roads. We don't want my friends on Route 8. They're vulnerable, I think. I don't know. You're the experts. So that's it. We're looking okay. at, you know, do you, can you elevate roads? Can you make sure that the bridges are structurally sound? Okay. Um, are there ways of outfitting drainage pipes, making enlarging drainage pipes 
to ensure the floodwaters don't have as great a channelized impact, okay. which obviously cause greater damage. Um, so there are a lot of strategies. At least somebody's thinking about it. Oh, yes. and, and the important thing is the public, if they don't agree with that, they can put their input in. If That's they right. do agree, they can put their input, which is the best part of a democracy, right? You know, it doesn't mean that we're, we're right or wrong, but we can have the chance to put input and in you allowing that in your document, right? And so bringing that back to the comp plan, mm -hmm. uh, that is an important part of this comp plan update to make sure that we have strategies in place that support further exploring our vulnerabilities and the studies that we have okay. and, how, and making sure that we're looking at ways of gathering community input and putting practices Good. in place. Yeah. And so to get back to the other key issues, uh, another, of course, is the potential uh, for a third span of the Bay Bridge. Amy, let me ask you before you start, and we can stay on that train of thought. I had one of the commissioners that told me, Fred, that's a state project. Mm -hmm. And we're a county of 50,000 people. We're not like Anne Arundel County with 500,000 voters or people can put pressure on our politicians. Mm -hmm. But we're a small county. Mm -hmm. Geographically speaking, we're in a situation, you want to go to the beach, you're going to go through us. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, we I, don't, and you're right, we don't, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said that, because yeah. we really don't have any authority or yes. power in that regard, but we get the impacts nonetheless. Uh, the side roads that are not the state roads that are yeah. ours, I guess you have to deal with, I would think, That's exactly traffic. it. So we're, we're at um, a critical mass. The county, again, is very proactive Good. in its planning Good. and has already generated a... Um, a transportation plan for Ken Island and the Narrows, which their um, our Department of uh, DPW are very um, proactive in trying to work. The with applause the state. meter just went up twenty <laughs> points when you said a traffic plan for Ken Island. Everybody's raising their hand. I love that. Okay. And they can go online and see it. It's Great. there now, Great. and it has a lot of strategies meant to assist the local community to be able to still get around okay. and access um, businesses and resources. It's tough now, on isn't weekends it? It's tough now. It's when, tough. Yeah, the, it's not only tough on the people who live there, but the poor sheriff's department has to be stopping people. Yeah. Are you a local? Are you, and then you get the legal. Oh, it's just a mess, isn't it? But we have to look at, so sure. here we are planning for the 10-year planning horizon. And you try to look ahead 20 years to okay. see what your issues are. And if clearly that's one of them. It's, and that's a big one. And it's a that's big a big one. one. And um, you don't want land use decisions to exacerbate that situation. Okay, right. And that leads us to the last one, which is the key land use issue, and that is our sewage capacity. Okay. And what does that mean in terms of um, what our growth areas look like and how we're going to allocate that remaining capacity? Well, um, again, like I said, one of the commissioners said, and correct me if I'm wrong, We've hit, the, we've hit that ceiling, guys. Uh, I mean, am I right or kind of? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for all intents and purposes, yes. There, okay. will be, um, there will be remaining capacity that is very limited. Okay. And the community and what we would advocate for is you know, looking at our existing zoning districts, maybe streamlining them, and also really encouraging infill development where that infrastructure already d exists. Exists, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the big thing I'm getting, I get I had three phone calls last night. Fred, when you get these two smart women on the program, I'm a farmer, I have three farms, by golly, I want the number one industry in Queen Anne's County, I believe is agriculture still. I think I'm correct. We, I want to make sure we're 301 and 50 to get together. Up north remains farming agriculture. Is that part of the plan? Is that being talked about or what? Yep. So okay. that has been included. Um, that area, most of it is already considered the county's priority preservation area. Okay. So any of the um, countryside zoning or agricultural zoning districts, um, that's the county's priority preservation area and that will continue into the next, this comp plan. So, um, no, good. Did you have a, okay. Um, so in that manner, you know, agricultural preservation is, does is involved into the um, land use chapter, um, and it does talk about you know the preservation of the rural areas, um, like you said, north of. Okay, um, uh, Stephanie, make this a member thick head. Okay, help me. So we're probably talking about our comp plan saying over the next ten years, 
Ken Island has been developed. It's a vibrant community. And it's meeting some needs and it has some purposes. But when we get up to that 30150 divide, we're gonna, are we going to try to keep that what I call rural? I don't know if that's a correct term. Is that going to kind of remain in the plan that would remain an agricultural rural area? Is that, is that a fair uh, interpretation of what the document might say? As, if, as, if approved. And, right. okay. As looking at the land uses as of now, um, yes, I would say that's consistent, that it would, it would okay. stay that way. Um, there has been requests for changes in land use or okay. in um, rezoning requests. So when the comp plan process started, a property owner could, could submit an application to have their property rezoned. Okay. Um, and anyone is, you know, can do that. Um, and we've received about 45 or so. Oh, because I've got some good news. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I always just say to the board, if you get more than 10 inquiries or 10 people speak out on any subject, that's a lot of folks, mm -hmm. and you've got 45. Well, this is just a request to change the zoning yeah. okay. of their property. Um, and, of course, they're scattered throughout the, throughout the county. Um, and this is kind of why the, the land use chapter also does get a little bit more um, <laughs> elevated, I guess you can say. It, you don't have any gray hair, Stephanie, but <laughs> would you tell her? Oh, I've got the white will, ones. <laughs> she will get them soon, maybe, right from that issue. Now, let me ask you again. Another issue I hear, Middletown, Delaware, mm -hmm. has gone from, when I moved here 40 years ago, there was nothing there. Now, Middletown, Delaware is where my wife shops, many people shop, mm -hmm. it's a boom area. It looks like to me it's a drop off from 95, or it will become mm -hmm. one. And I was, we had one person even told us the uh, Delaware Department of Transportation is even proposing in a film that 301 up there becomes six lane high, you know, it becomes a major drop off so you know, I don't have to go through Baltimore and cut through that back way. Do we talk about that at all? In other words, we always talk about growth in Ken mm -hmm. Island. A lot of people think they're going to sneak it in, if you, don't, if you want to limit it, sneak it in coming down north. Is that an issue or being talked about at all? Or? Well, regional planning issues are always a consideration. And sure. there's a ripple effect. Every decision yes. has, has, an act, you know, has a, a cause and effect a relationship. So that conversation has sparked a lot of um, interest in looking right. at flexibility within the 301 corridor. That means Jay Falstead has called you 10 times probably <laughs> on this issue. Jay and I are good friends. We're good friends. Well, and lots of people on lots mm -hmm. of sides sure. right. of that issue. Um, one of the limiting factors for the rural counties adjacent to Middletown mm -hmm is that our infrastructure along the Route 301 corridor isn't currently there, no. and the state highway doesn't... Is, this, is um, it two lanes? I think uh, that part of the county... I mean, it's two lanes, four lanes, I guess. Yeah, four but, yeah, lanes. Yeah, yeah. And is the, uh, one of the safety matters there, aside from maybe not having broadband or water and sewer available mm -hmm. in that corridor, but um, one of the key issues is the safety of access off of Route 301, and state highways are very um, particular about where they're going to uh, allow overpasses or okay. even J-turns. So not a local decision. We, the state's going to make those decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting, right? Ladies, I, like I said, you've done very well. You have no gray hairs, but <laughs> it amazes me that the issue of growth and some of the other issues you talked about immediately gets the people's attention. And the 40, like I said earlier in the show, the 40 years I've lived here, that's all every campaign ends up being about. I know you don't want to get involved in politics, and I don't want you to, but the growth issue is important. So here in a comp plan, you're going to lay out where we think we want to be in 10 years, okay? And by golly, you had, if I want to develop something in Southernsville, you have a chance to put in input and say, yeah, let's let this area develop, right? And the public can still do that, right, Stephanie? Make sure. Well, just note that Sudlersville, mm -hmm. uh, the municipalities have their own comprehensive plans. Oh, okay. So, so it's only the county. And that's good to point mm -hmm. out. Okay. County jurisdictions that. And that's true of Centerville too. Yep. So if Centerville, they want, if they, any of the any of the okay. um, Barkley, uh, Queen Anne, they all have their own. Okay. Um, their own all right, so don't get mad at you guys. Go back to town <laughs> if you want to go Centerville all the way to 301 or whatever. Now, we've got just a couple minutes left. So, again, let's go back. We're, I want to make sure I understand. This is mandated by the state. Mm -hmm. It's every 10 years. There's citizen input, okay? Mm -hmm. And the important thing, the, the, our elected county commissioners that we all elected, they'll have a chance to vote on this mm -hmm. after all this comment and reading over the document. 
And right now, if you want to see what's been prepared so far, you can go online, mm -hmm. and we'll put George and the gang, we'll put that on, so don't worry <laughs> yeah, about it, okay? okay? Uh, and you can still put some input. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, what can, and when do we think, you talked about 60 days, it is, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. When does this vote on? You know, like the budget has to be approved yep. by July. What's the magic date? Well, there, I guess there isn't a certain date oh, okay. that it has to be um, they like approved to have it by. Yeah. But it will be um, winter of probably 2020, February of 2022. Oh, okay. So we're still talking about uh, mm -hmm. September, October, November, December, and oh, five mm -hmm. more months we're working on this. But you okay. have to remember that 60-day review takes two months out of that yes. already. Three, yeah, three, okay, yeah. yeah. It's getting in there. Uh, well, ladies, look, we really appreciate, uh, how many people are working, uh, that's, that was a good, how many people besides, the, with, including the consultants, mm -hmm. your office, how many people are actually working on this document? I mean, gathering information, putting it, I mean, uh, the consultants actually are writing it, right? They're Correct. writing the, the paragraphs. Mm -hmm. But how many people were involved in the preparation, uh, not counting the public, which would be in the hundreds, if not thousands, mm -hmm. right? How many people have to work on this document to get it prepared? So we have a technical committee, I think mm -hmm. Amy mentioned mm -hmm. that, um, and basically they all have attended the technical committee meetings. I'd say there's 12, 13 members okay. maybe of the technical committee. So it's a big committee, committee. okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, part of the, the review process. Okay. Um, and then of course in our office, it's myself and Amy and um, another planner. Um, also, our development reviewers, obviously. And you have to do everything else. You still have to, when the guy knocks on that counter, some guy like me without a business card, <laughs> you still have to do that and run in the back room and work on Is that 100% of your effort now? On a uh, no, it's so probably not 100% of my time, but I'd say it's 75, 80% <laughs> okay. of my time. Amy and Stephanie, a couple minutes we have left. That's again, that's educate the public. So what... Do it percentage-wise. Where are you? How much time is with the comp plan, and how much time are other things you're doing now? Is that, oh, is, if wow. it's not fair, yeah. Um, Ball, we're ballparking <laughs> these. No one's going to hold you. Well, Stephanie's carrying the brunt of the workload okay. for our department. She's the project manager for the county, so she probably is 75, mm. 80 percent. So three quarters of your uh, oh, yeah. time is done. I would, I would say so. Even with communication, you know, with others outside so this of is a major the board of ed's planning this is a major very important mm -hmm. document it's not something that goes on a library shelf oh, no. that gets dust <laughs> this is a purpose so amy to finish up she's stephanie's three quarters of her time doing this how about your time well like you say it's a very important document yes. and we receive questions daily yes. from oh you get daily questions. how many questions would you get a day on the document whether it's coming from the consultant, mm -hmm, them mm -hmm. having questions, or the public, I'd say I'd least get one a day, definitely from the well, public. Well, that's enough to keep you tied mm -hmm. up on a phone for a while, if not emails, yeah. right? Sure. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, okay. There's a lot of back and forth with the consultant, obviously, working to, you know, either address things in the draft that you might have heard from another county entity having okay. to relay that back right. um, to the consultant. So. Well, ladies, look, our time's about thanks a million for this, all right? I mean, the comp plan is. To me, the hottest time, more people ask me about that, and so you've helped us out, and I really appreciate that. Good luck down the home stretch here, okay? <laughs> and good luck. Get back to acting, would you please, Amy? Give me my Star Trek salute. Come on, you can, there we go. I can't do that, I can't do that. Good luck with the kid. We were talking off the air, Stephanie. Besides doing this document, you've got kids that are gonna go back to school, which is gonna be an interesting year. Good luck, yep, okay? Thank you. And I do, I really appreciate your time. And I know the commute probably wore you out today. That's right. They work upstairs, okay. But I do appreciate it, yep. and the public does, all right? Yep. I'm Fred McNeil, thank you for watching QAC TV7. We hope this helps you out a little bit what this comp plan is and why it's important. Please read it, go on our web, the county website, and if you have any questions, have any problems, you can knock at the desk upstairs, you can call or whatever. You don't need a business card, right, ladies <laughs> like me? Okay, thank you very much. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're gonna see you next time.